The Virtual Campground is a community of RVers. We gather around the campfire to share stories, information, and travel tips that help you on your next adventure. Your camp hosts, Deborah and Barry Benton, are full-time RVers in search of quaint bookstores, cozy coffee shops with great Wi-Fi, and epic photography opportunities, all to share with you. So pull up your chair and join us in the Virtual Campground. It's Deborah Benton from The Virtual Campground, your camp host here at The Virtual Campground where we bring you news and information from our travels and about the RV industry. Today, I am coming to you from Garland, Texas and the house that I grew up in. In fact, this is the room that I grew up in. Um, it looks much different than it did when I was a teenager, but it is now the guest room. So we are settling in for the holidays here as we spend some time with family and enjoy the holidays and do a lot of you know things like doctor's appointments and checkups and RV checkups so taking care of lots of business while we're here in town as well. I'm already here in Garland but Barry was in Caddo Lake doing a photography workshop and he had an interview with Julie Chickory who has written a new book and we wanted to bring it to you. Um, Julie's book is the epic retirement bucket list it's probably backwards but um, it is the epic the epic retirement bucket list and um, this is not just for RVers because it does cover the whole country and I or the whole world and I don't think you're gonna get your RV to Thailand you can try for sure um, but at any rate it uh, covers lots of really great about 150 actually globe trotting ideas that you can do including a whole section of things you can do to do good in the world you can go out and do some volunteer projects that take you around the world and I think that's pretty exciting so she has some great chapters in there you're gonna hear more about that in the interview you're gonna also hear about Julie Julie was a full-time RVer she's actually one of the um, women that helped to found full-time Freedom Week and she was uh, did a lot of financial blogging at the time when she was full-time RVer. She's a former military as well. So she has lots of great information on RVing that you can find on her website, but in, that's how we met her. And now she and her husband are part-time RVers as they have gone to living in a stick and brick because they wanna be close to grandsons, their new grandson, which you know, those grandbabies, boy, taking a lot of people off the road. Um, but at any rate, the, you're going to hear a lot more about her and also the transition that they had of going from full-time back into a stick and bricks, which we talk a lot about going to full-time RVing, but not very often about coming back. So you're going to hear a little bit about that, and we hope to bring you more from people that have made that choice in the future as well. So at any rate, I hope you enjoy this interview, and we will put the link for her book in our show notes, and you can try to use um, our, you can use our link to get to Amazon and that would help us out greatly with our affiliate link. You can purchase her book. You can pre-order them now. You'll hear more. You can pre-order them now for um, delivery later in the month, just in time for Christmas. So at any rate, please enjoy. Welcome to the virtual campground, Julie. I'm so glad you are here. Thanks, Barry. I'm super excited to be here and chat with you tonight. So we heard you had written a book and we are so excited to explore that book. You sent us an advanced copy. It is the Epic Retirement Bucket List. And um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about, uh, about that with you tonight. But first, let's get to know Julie a little bit. Tell us a little bit about your RV story. When we first met you and Sean, it was, you were full-time RVers, but now I understand you've gone through a transition to part-time RVing. Tell us what's going on. Yeah, so um, back in 2014, my husband and I were retiring from the military and we were becoming empty nesters. And so we were trying to decide what to do next. And we decided uh, without ever having owned an RV before, hey, let's buy an RV and uh, travel around the United States. <laughs> uh, I think a lot of people end up with that kind of story, right? Like they've never done it before and just uh, hop hop in with both feet. So, um, but then we did it for six years. And um, along the way, I had already uh, told my husband, you know, once grandkids come along, I think I'm probably going to want to change things. I'm not making any promises. I'm going to do it for now, but, but we're going to see. And uh, sure enough, as soon as uh, my daughter-in-law got pregnant, uh, we talked about it. And luckily, Sean is very supportive because he knew I wanted to come back and be 
full on grandma mode for at least a couple of years. And so in 2020, uh, we bought a house uh, within an hour's drive of our grandson. We're hearing a lot of that. I mean, that's, I, I assume that's just a natural course of things, right? You, you RV for a while and then uh, it's time to settle down for one reason or another. And that's a fantastic reason to, uh, to stop RVing full time. So let's talk about this book. Uh, it, if I recall correctly, it's called The Epic Retirement Bucket List, correct? Yes, that's it. What motivated you to write this book? Well, one of the things that we found when we were traveling um, full time was just how rewarding travel was and and how much it really kind of spoke to us. Um, and so I just wanted to kind of share that love of travel and to give people ideas. So the book is kind of geared at being an idea type of book. Um, it's 150 different activities that people can do. And, and it's, so it's just, again, to be a little bit of inspiration and then just enough information to get people started planning their own journey. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's not a, a it, it gives you just that really nice feeling and flavor of why they should do more research on that. And then you give, um, for most, if not all of these, you give a website or some other tips on how to research further and, and uh, go through that. So um, I am excited about reading more of it. I have read parts of it. And what I read was really interesting. And one of the things um, that we get asked all the time, and I'm going to ask you that proverbial RVer question. Do you have some favorite spots or a favorite spot that uh, you've included in the book? We do. And I made sure to include two of our all time favorite national parks. When people ask us, what's your favorite place the, in the six years you were full timing? We always list these two national parks. Parks and one of them is Redwoods um, National. It's actually national and state parks uh, co-located out on the West Coast in California, and that is the actually the first entry in the book is on the Redwoods National Forest because it just we both of us were um, late forties I think at the time that we were there and we were walking through these redwoods and my husband and I just looked at each other and went wow. Like, how have we gone this far in our lives and not experienced this? And how many other people go their whole life and don't experience it? Right. That's one of the uh, wonderful joys about traveling so much, whether you're a full-time RVer, part-time RVer, or not an RVer at all. You just love to travel. Getting to see some of those uh, places really expands your horizons, expands your mind. It's really a great experience. Is there a place in... Is, is, are, you have not been to 100% of these locations, correct? No, I haven't. And I'm actually also glad that you brought up about RVer because I'm sure that uh, probably everyone watching the virtual campground is an RVer, but you can't even get to every place in the book <laughs> in an RV um, because they are all around the world. I have quite a few that are on our continent, but um, there's also others all around the world. And I have been to about half of the places in the book. So they were kind of my launching point, my inspiration and just some real treasures that I wanted to share with people. And then the other half are like my bucket list too. And so I just did a lot of research on these areas and um, are sharing them with people. So maybe they'll be on their bucket list as well. Awesome. And let's talk about that. So of the ones that you haven't been to, do you have one that's right at the top of the list that you're going to next or would love to go to next? Well, since we have moved to Virginia, I have gotten really into hiking and uh, so much so actually that I just completed hiking all of the trails in Shenandoah National Park. And as a result of that love of hiking, I've been really having my eyes on some epic hiking destinations. And so Switzerland and the Alps is a big on my list, on my bucket list of places that I haven't been to. And so I actually have two entries in the book on Switzerland. One is on riding the Glacier Express train that goes through some of the most majestic parts of the Alps. And another is in the Eat, Drink and Be Merry chapter on um, learning the art of making Swiss cheese. Oh, wow. That would be very cool. That would be very cool. Um, so writing a book like this is sort of, uh, it seems like a really cool idea to me, but 
seems very intimidating. You must have spent a ton of time doing research. Uh, how did you go about doing all that research and compiling everything? It must have taken you months, if not years. It, definitely, it took months. Um, the entries aren't very long, as you notice. So that's what makes the book um, so great to people, because like I said, it gives them enough information to kind of tell them about the place and then some resources that I used to help me do that research and that people can use also to kind of personalize their trips. So, um, but you're absolutely right. The research actually took longer than the writing part. Yeah. And one of the things I love about the book is that um, you divided them into sort of um, categories that make sense. So uh, there's an eat, drink and be merry. There's a go exploring. Uh, there's embrace new experiences give back and challenge yourself. So um, I think it's really cool, the concept of giving back. Can you talk a little bit about those experiences and where that came from? Yeah, it's uh, something that was kind of instilled in me when I was in the military. Um, it's doing community service wherever you're stationed is always a, a huge component of the military services and they really encourage it and even give you time off to do it. And so I've just always really been into volunteering. And so it was really important to me in this book to also include some volunteer type efforts. And I even have one uh, geared towards RVers, although anyone can do it. And that is um, Habitat for Humanity. And that is a project that I actually did volunteer with when I was in the military. And they have a program called the RV Caravanners. And what it is, um, for anyone that doesn't know about Habitat for Humanity, you build a house alongside the future owner. And you don't have to have any experience. There's uh, people who are employed by that organization who have the experience and who are the site foremen and such, but they teach you. And for the caravanners, it's an arm of that same organization where they do it near a campground so that people have a place to come with their RVs and then they make sure to set it up for a specific period of time so that RVers can come in, stay six weeks or so and build a house. Yeah, that's a great organization. And I did not know that they really catered or a faction of them catered towards RVers. That's really fun. Yeah. So let's and in that chapter, there's also... Um, overseas experiences that you could do as well um so if you were and 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 a, i'm sorry domestic and um overseas but for example if you are really into scuba diving i have a section on helping to restore the coral um, reefs in florida at the same time i have another chapter on our activity on helping to conserve whales in africa and both of those are for people who are scuba divers or snorkelers. How cool is that? Very cool. So you mentioned uh, that there is not a lot of information on each one. You've just sort of whetted the appetite of the reader that, to give them a general description of, of uh, the place or the activity or you know what they are going to see and do and, and, and what they're going to experience when they go there. And then each one has basically, a, I guess I would call it a footnote that describes where to go to get more information or how to take that next step. Is that, does that accurately depict each section? You're absolutely right. Um, each entry is only no more than one page. And at the bottom of each one, I have a get started tip. It's just two to three sentences with what I think is the most important thing you need to know right away. So it might be something about like the time of year that that particular activity is best for um, or other tips like that. And then there's an entire resource section in the back that is divided by chapter. And every single activity has at least one site, website, and in some cases, two or three websites to help people get information and plan. Fantastic. I am excited for you and I'm excited about this book. Uh, I've already gotten several ideas uh, for our future travels, so I appreciate all the effort you've put into that. Um, when and where will this be available? So the book is available now for pre-orders on Amazon. It will be um, actually published on December 20th. That was pushed back just a few weeks from the original um, publishing date. But December 20th is when they will ship out the books that anyone pre-ordered. And um, two weeks before that, so a 
about the 10th of December, I think it is, it will be uh, available for Kindle pre-orders as well. Or again, you could just wait until actually December the 20th and get it Kindle or get it um, paperback. And then it will be a few months later that it will actually be in bookstores. So the ones that are still around, like your Barnes and Noble. <laughs> We love bookstores, and uh, that'll be exciting once you uh, walk into a bookstore and see your book on the shelf. Yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to get a signed copy from you now that you're going to be famous and all that. Well, I don't know about being famous, but I would happily <laughs> give you a signed copy. <laughs> Excellent. Well, let's uh, circle back around to sort of where we started, your RV story, because one of the things that we're curious about, and um, we've had a number of conversations with people, tell us a little bit about your personal story and that transition from full-timing to part-time. You mentioned that you did it for family reasons and um, sounds wonderful, but how hard was that transition and what steps did you take to go through that? Well, we um, made the decision in advance that we were going to buy a house. So um, we found a campground near where we wanted to live and um, we just started house hunting. It was actually more complicated for us at the time because it was during the height of the COVID pandemic in April, March and April of 2020 is when we were house hunting. The end of May is when we actually closed on the house. And um, some other things that were difficult were getting furniture. Um, <laughs> just, and, you know, one great thing I'll say about full-time RVing though, is it became, it, helped my husband and I become minimalists. Right. And so we moved into this house, which was a little bit bigger than we wanted, but it was on the perfect piece of land. And one of our things going into it was that we wanted, because we still RV a lot. So we wanted to be able to park our RV on our land. So no HOA telling us we can't mm -hmm. do that. Exactly. So we're out in the county, outside of a city. Um, we're not, not even a big town, but it's in a county. So you don't have those types of ordinances. We don't have an HOA and we can just hop in the RV and go whenever we want. And that kind of helped with the transition as well. But we also just looked at each other and said, we're not filling this house up with stuff like we did before. We're going to stay minimalist. And, and it's been two years now, two and a half years, actually. And uh, we're still staying true to that. That's awesome. Yeah, that sounds really yeah, that's right in line with our thinking. We've had discussions about one day when we come off the road. We don't want to go back into some big house and uh, fill it full of uh, furniture. So we, we like this sort of minimalist approach. So we're right in line with that. So is there anything that um, that now that you're not on the road that you miss not being on the road? Well, I mean, I miss traveling all the time. So that's why we have decided um, to, like I said, park our RV right here at our house. And we take trips all the time. I've already taken my grandson. I think I took him on his first camping trip when he was three months old. Uh -huh. And we just came back from Florida. We obviously, my husband and I are, um, well, he works remotely and I'm a writer. So I work on my own schedule. And so we can kind of take off whenever we want, just like when we were full timers. But our son and daughter in law are working full time. So they flew down to Florida and were able to spend a week with us. So it's still just a great family thing. And so I would just say, even if you go to transition from full time to part time, don't give it up because I could never give up our being. I just love it too much. That's awesome. Well, that sounds fantastic, Julie. Thank you so much for spending some time with us here on the virtual campground. I'm excited for you and the book and uh, the grandkids. And, and uh, you've got a lot going on. And uh, we're so happy you came to spend some time with us. Oh, thanks. I just really appreciate the opportunity to get to share my book and uh, to chat with you. Thank you, Julie. Have a wonderful evening. You too. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that interview and please tell us down in the comments what is on your bucket list. We are actually uh, working on our 2023 schedule and hoping to check off a couple things. One of them being Barry is really wanting to photograph the Oregon coast. So we're planning to spend most of the summer up there uh, so we can move around and see the coast. So let us know in the comments where you want to go next year or just in the future and what's on your retirement bucket list, whether you're retired or not. 
Um, Barry's not retired and we're still checking things off the bucket list. So at any rate, please let us know in the comments. Please subscribe, like, all those things you're supposed to do when you watch somebody on YouTube. You know the drill. So at any rate, I hope you um, will come back next week. Hopefully next week we're live and get a chance to actually chat with you. I would like that. So at any rate, have a great week and we'll see you around the campus.